Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new episode of the FPV Auto America League. Now today we're off to round three which is at the very very famous Laguna Seca in the California Hills. Now must admit Laguna Seca has never been one a good track to me or two a track that I particularly love. As I've gotten a bit older I've started to appreciate it a bit more. Uh, at the moment in the background you can see my fastest lap in qualifying. Um, Usual story, had zero time to practice, almost didn't get into the lobby, I kept getting connection timeout, so I tried one final time, and luckily I got in, otherwise I probably would have completely pulled out of the league, because, um, lack of, basically I have a ridiculously lack of time anyway, so I'm not getting a massive amount of practice in and stuff, so if I had another kind of hurdle to jump over in terms of couldn't be out the race, I probably would have just pulled out and given my position to someone else, but, anyway, here we are today at Laguna. One of the usual things, not got much practice in unfortunately, it's one of those races again where uh, I think Friday night on my stream I did about 30 laps, now again a lot of them laps were messing around with Reese and stuff so none, none of them laps really were anything special so came into this one today, did a decent about a decent amount of practice in the practice session and then got pretty much all of the qualifying session in and that was a, a good way of getting up to speed so come into the final corner here you see I get a much better run out than my previous one and again about a tent we are fortunately P4 and we just go slightly slower literally a tent of a tent off of the front row now at this point I'd done two or three push laps in a row and I was thinking right I'm gonna take a lap off and then go again but if you just saw I only had a minute and like 30 left so I wouldn't have made it around again so that was kind of my session done so going to be starting P4 uh, usual kind of crew around me Alex Fox or Boxer and Martinson on pole now we get to the race 15 lap race easy enough track to crash at really you have the elevation of going up to the course crew and then you've coming down through rainies and the, the drop down to the bottom last two corners and here we are now for four red lights on the grid and we get a decent is launch i must say we got a much better initial launch than martinson but then we go to the outside foxbox not great at this point you can probably hear as well all you can hear is r6 as you don't know what is what i have a quick look behind me there as i just cut across to make sure i'm not taking anybody's noses big thing for me in first person is you see i get very close alex who's very slow through turn one kind of parks it and just runs it out to turn two now up into p3 we gained a position i believe skeptical out there just went slightly wide and gave me the position um, these bikes usually respond well to being clutched off the line, so it's kind of the, the way it goes. You have to risk it off the line. Early on here, as always, it feels terrible in the race because the frame rate on other bikes just goes down. So immediately, the first like three laps of any day race on GP bikes for me is like my worst three. See, Skeptical Land goes in wide there after I went wide. Have a quick look across, do it again. I'm trying to drag race them up to the next left. My brake as late as I possibly can turn in. Uh, it just doesn't turn in in time. I have to pick it up. I do throw my hand up just as apologies. I didn't mean to kind of basically send it on him. I felt I was pretty much in control, but I just had absolutely no turning. So maybe the brakes, the tyres, just not really in the optimal window yet. So fortunately, now we're back to P5. So we've actually lost the position of Sarah behind. Uh, a few of the usual candidates in front so at this point now i'm thinking right the long race 15 laps anything can happen we need to get into a nice rhythm now this corner here i actually get a pretty tidy through there that's pretty tidy for me considering how bad i take it through this race every time i came through there in the race frame rate just died so i'm not really sure why that is alex i believe who just tipped off at the final corner shades of casey stoner 2008 so that is me back into my grid position of p4 so this point now i'm thinking right we just need to get a head down and push on really now you see here now as we fast forward to lap three you got a flag ahead into this corner here martinson has a weird like tank slapper crash and goes off now he is ridiculously quick so i was thinking in my head even though he's crashed he's going to be still quick me so at this point now the three amigos are in front of me all in a little pack there so i'm thinking if i can just slowly up my pace maybe i can kind of just drift my way up and put myself and my name in the hat for the top three of the podium positions today so it was a long way still ahead we still had so much to go on at this point i was slowly getting down to a bit more rhythm now uh, p5 as well it was just uh, keep me honest he was kind of catching me in some sections and i just wasn't really riding at my kind of potential really i felt like opening laps everything just felt a bit clay clumped and it was very lumpy riding now again that is another rider i believe that was fox or boxer who crashed out of p2 so probably my main championship rival really i don't know really class martinson is in my league you can see now into this penultimate corner absolutely literally off the track it went so away it's just whatever reason as i change direction the fps would drop and uh 
just completely cause so much understeering when you have so much muscle memory of just going over the track in first person in a certain way you can't just throw the bike in a bit earlier because your muscle memory just does not like that now again we're coming through here again this time slightly better so we're slightly adapting here on lap six coming to the final corner and there is a yellow flag in front now we're up to p3 after crashes for other people so we're actually on the podium now that is skeptical ant early in front he was battling with martinson after martinson's crash and uh, I think Martinson has got the better of him. I think Skeptical is probably just stretching maybe to keep with him. Which is uh, no shame against someone as quick as Martinson really. Because uh, even in third person I don't think I could leave a glove on him really to be brutally honest. So considering he was kind of keeping Martinson honest and keeping him under the pressure. I was considering myself not in the, not really in a race with this guy. Now he had run right again there. So as always after you crash you have a little, a little tense moments or two where you like again he looks like he's missed the apex there and he's just not riding as fluid as he would have been while battening for the win so it's just going to take him a couple of laps maybe a couple of sectors just to get back to on speed and again i was going personal best because i could sense maybe he just wasn't feeling it after the crash and uh, i was just trying to get myself right on the back of him and just see what we could do so again we're going personal best to the middle sector at the moment but he's just slowly starting to up his speed and kind of manage the gap and i think really was probably a uh, bit of optimi optimistic really for me to think I could even get, catch him really um, he's definitely quicker green fly behind I'm not really sure who that was for because I don't believe uh, it was Alex but I could be wrong just again it's so hard to see when you're riding who's where and who's doing what first person is such a an absolute crazy race now you might have seen there skip land all over the inside car but now how he didn't crash and to be honest that would have been uh, P2 in the bag pretty much for me because he would have been so far back after crashing at a fast corner like that now He's brought him right back into the clutch as you can see at this point now He's just managing and maintaining an idea of where I am on track So at this point now I'm thinking right we just need to keep pushing and uh, pressing on and unfortunately this time Let's get it a little wrong into turn one just missed the apex of the first one now it is a double apex so we do get a nice apex You can see the front end chattering away mad there into turn one and two but Thankfully as now as we come through here no other issues with the front end Big for big thing for me with Laguna say because we get a little tank slapper out of turn four is the elevation. It was just trusting that the front would stick. Now I spent a lot of time getting my tires in the optimal window in terms of the pressures and stuff so that I have a, a good race uh, in these California hills. And this con here was car caused me a lot of bother really. Just front like the front always pushed in. I couldn't really get the bike stopped now. In my last few laps of qualifying, I changed the way it started to take it, but in the race I was just a bit kind of uh, tense doing it because. It was definitely quicker but it was more risk because basically what i was doing was coming into that long left i was going back three gears all in one go and getting a handful of rear brake and the bike would drift the whole way in but then you'd also have to really heavily blip the throttle to slide and keep control of the bike and um, i did it a few times in, in the qualifying session towards the end and it went a lot quicker but then the odd lap i would crash from over rotation of the rear i'd, I'd had a few moments so coming into the rear race i had to think to myself is it worth it now for the most of the race i do believe i do try it now that is Skeptiland, he's crashed again. He's probably had not a great race after probably riding above his limits and keeping with Martinson, which is no mean feat really in this game. Um, coming back towards me, probably felt like he didn't deserve to be near me on track because of his pace. And unfortunately, he's made a small mistake now. We're up into P2. Absolutely, everything is going gravy. Coming into this corner, I was just talking about a second ago. Now, you can see the gap behind is pretty non-existent to Alex. He's pretty close. So from here on now, I'm thinking, right... I have Skeptical Ant a couple of seconds back and I have Alex a couple of seconds back so there's a good chance here if we don't protect and maintain our speed we could lose our podium here and after uh, P4 in round 1, uh, P3 in Barber in round 2 I'm looking to try and keep my podium streak and try and stay on the box and get good points for the championship so at this point now I'm just thinking right I just need to manage my speed I'm doing pretty much on my personal breast here as you can see 10 to 10 to the half off again even on lap 11 I'm still not hitting that apex just felt really weird through there and I just could not get up to speed now I thought for a second that might have been Martinson but I was thinking there's no way he lost that much time it is a back marker that we are catching up to so unfortunately we are not in for the battle of the lead and you can see Alex has crept up on in the last couple of corners through Rainy I think he gained a lot now coming in here you'll see in a second I have a quick look and he looks like he's going to the inside but I have to turn in I can't just let him have the position so I'm trying to defend him, but I'm also trying to be as fair as possible. This is the biggest issue I have with riding first person. I have no idea where he is. You'll see in a second. I'll have another look, I'd imagine. Uh, again, coming out of here, I have a quick look. But unfortunately, that just puts me a touch wide. And just, again, the distraction of trying to battle Alex. And again, 
my lack of experience really in first person. I just didn't control my trajectory perfect. I just went over the edge of the curb and maybe that's what happened to Martinson in his crash early in the race. But unfortunately that has put me down now to P5 and we only have three, three and a half laps left. So now at this point you can see him going under again. I just talked to myself, look, I might as well push to see can I get back. It's an easy track to crash that I proved there. I made a very small mistake by just going off the edge of the curb and it bit me. So uh, in front of me in P4 to Shemi, I'm trying to just put him under pressure and catch him in. Now, he, in early in the race, he was in P4 when I was in P3 and he was keeping me honest and probably just keeping me under a bit of pressure. So I was thinking he's not going to be slow, but at this point in the race now, I think to myself, I have to go all out. I've been trying to manage the race too much. Uh, green flag there, but there's none of the three in a row here between me, Tashemi, and Floki, who was wildcarding in P6. So, again, you can see him I've taken a lot of time out of him, and he's drifting in, riding the proposal rider. Goes a very V line through the last corner. I'm just trying to use all of the track, using all of the curb, just trying to get the run now. We're coming on to a couple of laps to go, so I don't have much time to really get this move done. You can see he's pulled quite a bit out of the last corner. But again, I feel very strong on this bike. On the braking, we've drifted it all the way into the apex of turn one and two. We're right back. So now I'm thinking maybe can we go for a move? But coming out of turn two, he does very well not to crash there and to stay on it. Lit the rear wheel up and he just tucks right in behind me. You'll see here in a second. I believe I have another look coming out of here. And he's right in behind me. So we are thankfully back to P4, but it's not done yet. He's definitely not dispatched, but he's quite quick. So I'd imagine with me in front of him trying to push on, he'd probably just go with me. Also, Floki, who's in P6, is probably quicker than me as well, so I was uh, not really comfortable even in P4, but at this point in time, P4 is probably the best I could have got out of this race. If you look at the gap to Alex, who was in P3, and Skeptical Hunt is about 7.5 seconds, so realistically, without any mistakes from the two boys in second and third, I'm not really doing much else in this race. So at this point now, I'm just pushing on, trying to maintain P4. We get the, the Rossi line through, the car screw, um, it's so blind up there and the elevation everything goes a bit weird so a lot of times you end up either turning too much and the bike doesn't turn to the top and then sometimes you just get that kind of weird front end feeling and just pushes it onto the gravel but we've kind of pushed on here towards the second half of this lap and we are really trying everything to break away from Tashemi and basically make P4 our position now, unfortunately he is sticking pretty close to me and he's looking comfortable there so probably going to be a battle to the final lap and the final corner but again my eyes now i need to keep pushing i can't think too much about what's behind me i need to keep pushing and hope that maybe one of the riders in front make a mistake and then i can push on and see can i get a podium and to be fair i really should have got a podium really in my eyes i think i had the speed and um, maybe early in the race i just needed to push on a bit my lap times in the second half of the race especially after i crashed as the two boys behind, actually no sorry, it was just Floki, for a split second there it looked like it was Tishemi and Floki both went down, but it was actually just Floki, so that uh, takes the pressure off that at least if I make a mistake now, worst case scenario is P5, which wouldn't be a terrible result, but qualifying P4, you kind of want to back it up by getting at least where you qualify, just to show that your, your pace is as good as your one lap, so in first person I feel like maybe... I'm probably not as consistent over the race pace and maybe I'm a bit more of a one lap hero whereas in third person I feel the complete opposite whereas uh, I can do pretty much every lap the same lap in lap out and I don't really have that out and out one lap kind of hold your breath pace usually so a couple of other flags here coming down here um, another lapped rider I believe but it actually turns out to be Alex so he's obviously crash going through rain he's trying to push Skeptical Ant to the line we're coming on out to the final lap and realistically I'm thinking that's the podium there in front of me and uh, we were battling him when we crashed now obviously it wasn't his fault he did nothing wrong but it was just that slight distraction that he was there and I was just trying to my brain was just being used up by the fact that he was there and I had to give him room and I just drifted too wide onto the edge of the curb and uh, I bit the price but at the moment now we're going slightly under already in sector one so we're really trying to push on and just put him under pressure because again we saw what happened with Skip Delant earlier in the race when he crashed and I got on the back of him he was a bit kind of erratic and out of shape early in the, the next lap or two afterwards and then he ended up crashing so at this point now I'm thinking to myself if I can just press Alex maybe into a saw mistake it looks like Deshemi's P5 is probably done he probably doesn't have the speed to get with me uh, so far this lap has been pretty tidy but it's just not enough really to get onto the back of the R6 in front of me and to be honest I was probably thinking it's going to come to a mistake Alex was definitely quicker than me. You can see up here, we just touched the dirt. We're breaking so late into the corkscrew. Now, you'll always have the, the compression 
into a breaking zone but it looks like we did take a lot of time out of him we actually are going under now through here though we just we're just pushing too much just go wide there through rainies and that kind of was it really um like i said i was on my limit trying to catch him but unfortunately my limit was probably not uh, anywhere near quick enough to catch him and there's a small little bump here as well if you get it wrong so even the last corner if you just drift off the edge of the curb there's a little bump and you can easily lock the front but no such mistakes from alex as he takes p3 p4 for me not a bad result in the end overall slightly disappointed with the mistake um, I wanted a, a clean race so I hadn't crashed. I had multiple issues in round one in round Atlanta. I made the two mistakes, or one or two mistakes, depending on where you look at it, in Barber, and that kind of put me out of the. Basically, it lost me my guaranteed P2. Now, you can see on screen now the championship results. So, we are in P3. Skeptic Atlanta is four points ahead of us. We are 10 ahead of Tashemi already. Martinson, even though he's missed round one, is four points clear. So. Realistically, if he just shows up, he's probably going to win the championship comfortably. Foxer Boxer, who had a rough week in Laguna Seca, has dropped further back. So, unfortunately for him, he has lost another few points to me, which was probably my main title rival, really, coming into this round. I was thinking to myself that I had to kind of just beat him, but skipped Lantern coming in and putting in a very solid right, getting in P2. Just took enough points to leapfrog me as well but we're going to leave there for episode and round three of the championship we'll be back in two weeks time for round four which comes from circuit of the americas one of my favorite tracks and i'll be hoping to be back on the box in texas thank you for watching see you soon slonga full